Hey there, traders. This is Sam. Welcome back to another E-mini Futures Market Recap for Monday, October 28, 2024. The time is currently 7.47 a.m. Eastern. We're looking at levels in the SPY that will serve as our basis for entering trades in the E-mini Futures today. The spiders have been pushed around a lot lately. If you recall, last Friday morning, price was below that range defined by the triangle consolidation. They got into that range during the open session and then fell back below. Now, by Monday morning, the futures have pushed price back up in the middle of all that again. I have a couple screenshots from earlier this morning that I want to show you. This first one is a one-minute chart as of 7.06 a.m. this morning. The levels are what we had on the board from Friday. The vertical line is just a close uh, at 1600 or 4 p.m. Eastern. So just want to show you that after dripping a little lower after the close on Friday, they jumped up all the way up here in the pre-market, open at 4 a.m. And where do they open? They open to the penny at 581.22, the bottom of this zone. And then they went up to this next level we had, which is 582. They actually went to 582.79, a penny above, stalled out, and then kind of came back down. So just want to point this out because, first of all, this is the zone that would have gotten you into trouble on Friday if you weren't paying attention. And I'm pointing this out because this is the kind of price action that should have happened on Friday. Not sure why they waited until the next trading day to respect these levels correctly, but they're still important, as you can see. This next screenshot is from a few minutes later. It was 7.15 at the time, using a five-minute chart. And here we have the trend lines from last week. Triangle pattern should be pretty straightforward to see. And the longer-term trend line up here is from the daily chart. I just want to ask if you think there's something to these trend lines, considering how price is behaving around and within these areas already today. This is a long time after these trend lines have been identified on various charts. The bottom line is price is, at least as of right now, back up in that range as the bulls intended. Now we're going to find out if they can keep price elevated and push price up today or this week or so into new all-time highs. Or are they going to fail again and fall back out of this range? And if they do fail, it could be more spectacular this time and maybe worth sitting back and watching instead of putting money at risk. There are no data releases of significance until Wednesday this week. Each of the last three days of this week have morning data and number releases that could do something to price. And then next week is the FOMC meeting and resulting announcement. So we could have an interesting next couple weeks. Timing is about right for something bigger to happen. We'll see. After the closing bell, we'll come back to this chart and talk about any e mini trades that may have resulted from the spiders hitting these levels for today. Catch you on the other side. We are back. The time is now 7.51 p.m. If you look very closely, you might be able to spot the level that the spiders thought was important today and spent some time hanging around it. Do you see it? If you guessed this level right here that I'm pointing to, then congratulations on your spatial awareness. You have now passed the minimum requirement to run for president of the United States. Best of luck to you. For everyone else, the level we're talking about is 581.51. Pretty easy to see that the spiders thought that level was important all day. But could you have made money if you traded the E-minis when the SPY hit this level at the appropriate time? I sure hope so. You could have closed your eyes and either bought or sold the first time the spiders came into this level, and you would have pulled at least a four-point base hit at some point. But we're treating this like a process, because at the open, you really would not have known that they would be basically flat at this level most of the day. It was really about a 20-point S&P drop overall from high to low, but still not a lot of deviation from this level. Once again, I'd like to point out that this level was identified long before the opening bell. So is this magic or math? Well, I may or may not have played a wizard on TV at some point in my life, but I'll tell you now that I'm not a wizard. I just know what to look for in the charts, and I understand some basic math behind how to calculate these levels. And you can do it too. I have confidence in you. But back to the trades, yes, either you could have waited for a base hit on the long side the first time the spiders came down into 581.56, that's what the five cent buffer applied, for a bounce, or later for a recycled trade, which would have been right here actually, when enough time had passed when they got out of this level. I should point out that in both of these potential trades, price behaved in such a way that you may have jumped out of the trade because of something that I call a near miss. Happened kind of definitely on this long trade here. As you'll see in the recording of the live trade from the day, the trade that I took, it's why I actually did not take the long trade the first time uh, here. There was something that I saw that had the potential to develop on a larger time frame that could have made a short trade more 
desirable. So I actually went short when they got under the level, had to ride this out. A little unorthodox considering how I usually trade these levels, but it should make sense when we watch the recording. But for the record, we'll say that one base hit of four points really right here. When they came back up underneath it, that was the most probable trade today if you were playing by the rules. Four ES points. As I already said, I traded this level on the short side when price got under it. I'll start playing this now. So right after the near miss, I sold two contracts. You can just pay attention to the time. And when I enter the trade, I was ready to go long, but they had this near miss. You see a, a limit order here, but just kind of getting to the point here. The short trade was when they got underneath it. And so based on how, so my plan was I was going to sell two contracts. And later, as they got higher and went and got out of the money, they went higher. I sold one more contract at a certain place, which I'll show you later when we dig into the analysis of this trade. It was on a larger time frame. So I was short three total contracts eventually. So at first I planned to buy back two of the contracts. And as I'm talking here, let's just speed up to you so you can see what I'm talking about. They got back out of the money, I got above, and at a certain place I sold one more right there. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So my plan was to buy back two. You see that right there, a little over $1,000. However many points that was on that combined position. Uh, but then I've changed my mind and decided to go ahead and just take all three off at around $1,300 because it looked like there was kind of support around that area was growing at this point. So I just took all three contracts off at the same time, ended up getting like eight and a half points or so, eight and point six points on the trade. And that's all I did today. I decided around noon that I would close up shop. So I am perfectly happy with $1,300 on a three contract position. So I'll scrub ahead here. And show you when they came down to this profit target. I jumped out, got filled. So I'm out of the trade, and then I kind of just hovered right here. You can see this. This is kind of where I got out, thinking, well, was I right about this? Were they going to bounce at this point, or were they going lower? Because remember, if I had a one contract trailer, I would probably stopped out at this point. So it was kind of good to take the three contracts off. So as you already know, this was pretty much the low of the day. They bounced around this area, went back up, hovered around the level, from the morning and never really got much lower. 12, about 12 quarter after or so, stopped and didn't take any more trades. You can sort of see they never hit any of the levels anyway, so there would have not been any trades anyway. I said I would show you why I sold again with that additional contract when the trade got out of the money and they were up higher. There was a good place to add to the position and I want to show you that now. I was looking at this 15 minute chart at the time and I saw this starting to develop. So first there's a pivot high right here. This was on Friday. And then right after the open this morning, this is all today right here, they opened, they went up a little bit and pulled away pretty fast. And it started to look like, like they're given another pivot at this point. So what can you do with two or more points? You can connect them with a trend line like that. So at this point in the day, they're down here. I'm short with two contracts. But when they started to get back up near this newly developing trend line, it's also becoming apparent that they are making what you could call like a bearish inside bar consolidation pattern. That's when you have a relatively large breakdown candle, like this red candle here, and then smaller candles that are starting to climb back up toward the top of this breakdown candle. So timing is important too, by the way. But generally, as price gets up toward the top, one of two things is going to happen. One, the pattern plays out the way it's supposed to, and price is rejected somewhere near the top and plays down to the downside, generally under the low of that breakdown candle. The other thing that could happen is that price shoots above. There's a push above, and they get maybe one or two. You see one or two closes above the high of the original breakdown candle. If that happens, the chance of a bearish move out of that pattern is diminished. But in this case, we have this fresh trend line developing around the same place. So when time and price converged about right here, that's when I sold the additional contract, added to my position, basically looking for at least a pullback toward the bottom here. And as you can see, and as you already saw in the recording of the live trade, I was rewarded for holding on to the short trade, jumping out down here actually, when they kind of hit this 50 period moving average, which happened to be kind of the low of the area. Not magic again, it's just in how you would look at the charts. So by the way, are you guys interested in me explaining and analyzing trades like this? I've kind of noticed that I've done this a few times now and not sure if you find value in these kind of things. It's really just the tip of the iceberg compared to what I've put into this trading course. But if you find value in this type of thing, just let me know. Otherwise, it would be quicker for me just to make these recap videos all about the levels and the resulting trades without going into details of individual trades like this. So like, okay, here are the levels. Catch you on the other side. We're back. Here are the trades, the good, bad, the ugly. Thanks. Have a nice day. That would be 
quick for me, saving me some time, but I do enjoy providing a few clues here and there about how I view the charts, kind of my brand of analysis, if you will. Just let me know if you have an opinion. Thanks. Does the daily chart tell us anything? Honestly, it doesn't tell us a whole lot. They started out the day with some promise, but kind of fizzled out. And they closed below the open of Friday, but that's not necessarily a bad news. It's not like they fell and closed below the low of Friday or below this 20-period moving average. Either way, no good signals that I see here, nor on most of the other smaller time frames. On the hourly chart, you could say that they're making another triangle consolidation pattern like this, but do we say that this would play out to the upside or to the downside? It's kind of hard to say at this point. They're still generally bullish, so maybe the bulls are using this to build up some energy to push higher. I'm not going to make any bets at this point, but as you know that by tomorrow morning, I'll have found some new levels that should work for our intraday trades. But looking at these larger time frames, nothing really conclusive. I also notice on this hourly chart, they're just really getting right in between some important moving averages. This is the 50 period, that's the blue line, and the 100 period moving average which happens to be right where the 20 period is right now at 580.83 in the post market. I haven't moved a whole lot. Meanwhile, over on the tracking logs, here are the results for the day. The first log is the playing by the rules log. And we had one base hit at the level, at the level du jour, the one level that price hung around all day. And then on my trades, the Sam's trades log, I got the more than a base hit. It was the net of 8.67 points on the three contract trade, $1,300 before commissions. So that's a wrap for today. I hope you found some value in what I provided and learned something. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so to stay updated. Thanks again. If you're interested in learning more, then check out the website at ticksandtrades.com. There's a link below as well, or at least it's in the description, and you can learn more about the upcoming trading course and the daily levels subscription. And feel free to leave a comment below. I always appreciate hearing from you if you want to engage. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow with new levels and another game plan. Have a great rest of your day.